Now for a very interesting encounter between Aronian and Kramnik from their match in Zurich, um, which produced some of the most interesting games, I think, of uh, 2012, perhaps because it was a, a friendly match. Um, but Aronian uh, played against Kramnik's Berlin defence, and ultimately the structure arose with uh, black taking on d4 and white recapturing with a piece. Um, so after the Berlin, uh, Aronian picked this slow system with uh, d3. And now after knight e7, um, elsewhere we'll see Caruana picking uh, d4 in this position against Kramnik, but uh, here Aronian went for h3. Rook one c6, bishop a4, rook e8, d4, bishop b6, h6, a4, bishop e6, and knight f1. And uh, here Kramnik took a, an interesting... Um, decision to try to open the play because uh, black is ahead in development. Uh, he has developed all of his minor pieces, um, has a good stake in the center, and um, white has yet to develop uh, his bishop on c1, and that struggles slightly for a good square. Um, and so E takes d4 was an interesting response, and already after Aronian's uh, reply, we get a very original position. Um, C takes d4 would have been more standard, uh, you would have thought, when black can play bishop a5, um, trade bishops, and then bring his queen to b6, um, with perhaps some advantage for white in view of uh, his strong pawn center. But Aronian uh, decided to take with a knight and then play f4 to try to uh, gain some kingside space. And Kramnik responded with an excellent pawn sacrifice. So d5 is very principled, e5 and knight e4. And uh, now if white doesn't do anything, um, black will be able to consolidate that knight with f5. So... Um, Aronian is basically compelled to take, but here, uh, unsurprisingly, he avoided rook takes e4, um, which would have left black with uh, some very serious uh, compensation um, in the form of his two bishops and his lead in development. Um, so uh, Igor Stoll, who produce a typically uh, detailed analysis of this game, gives this line, um, which is very intuitive, f6 and uh, white's position is uh, is quite difficult. Um, so Aronian instead played this uh, deflecting move um, and aims instead to, to capture the e4 pawn in comfort, perhaps with a knight. And after bishop b6, king h2, um, that's what he's ready to do. But uh, Kramnik played c5, knight f5, exchange on f5, exchange on d1, rook e8, and bishop e3. Um, and now after rook d3, rook e1, um, Aronian is ready to, uh, to collect this e-pawn after either knight d6 or possibly rook a4. Um, whereupon he'll be left with a very mobile, active kingside majority, um, which can advance maybe maybe even more effectively in the end game than in the middle game, because White doesn't need to be so worried about the exposure of his own king. Um, but Kramnik uh, anticipated this with an excellent move, f6, um, and he wants to maintain the e-pawn as a strong asset. Uh, so Aronian took King F8, Rook A4 so trying to uh, to keep the pressure on this pawn which for the moment still can't be supported with F5 um, Rook D5, C4, Rook D3 and now B4 um, was 
probably an oversight by Aronian because it allows this very strong exchange sacrifice by Kramnik. So rook takes e3 and c takes b4. And now um, this e pawn um, is extremely strong. Um, and actually, uh, Kramnik maybe slightly overestimated its strength in that he pushed it straight away. Whereas uh, Stoll gives some uh, some detailed analysis to suggest that knight e7, just to limit the knight on h6, uh, would have been extremely strong. Uh, so, so it takes b4, bishop c7. And, uh, yeah, black has two pieces for a rook, and uh, you would have thought excellent winning chances from here. Um, instead, e3 was a little bit more forcing, but now uh, white was able to bail out into um, this endgame. And... Well, White is a pawn up uh, in the end game. He has absolutely no advantage uh, because um, the black B pawn is extremely strong and uh, threatens to run. So uh, Aronian took the very um, sensible decision to uh, to force a draw with Rook B five check. And um, clearly, um, King takes Knight D six check would be something of a disaster. Um, so instead, the king came back to c6, but now after knight d4 check, king c7, rook c5 check, um, there's nothing there for black, because uh, if he goes to b7, rook b5 check, draws, and after d7, uh, white has rook a5. Um, so in many respects, quite a non-standard game, um, quite typical actually of the, the match in Zurich, which was very originally played by both players um, but some interesting thematic content uh, about the structures which arise when black takes on d4 and white recaptures with a piece.